Hello, it's Thursday the 12th of May 2016. We're a bit late today because I've had no internet for 12 hours, dear. Oh, it was shocking. You feel completely and utterly cut off from the world now, don't you? No internet for 12 hours. But it, it, not even this morning. When I woke up, it still wasn't fixed. So I dialed 150 on the emergency backbone. Da -da 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 Batman! Yes, I dialed 150 only to be informed that areas with the postcode RG12 were affected by an outage and service would be resumed by four o'clock this afternoon. I thought, four o'clock, dear? What about the millions of people that watch this programme? Some of you for the first time today. A very, very welcome to you. My name's Chris Reard and this is United Kingdom Talk. Just 20 minutes of rubbish pouring out of my mouth here. It's like I've verbal diarrhoea. I've always had verbal diarrhoea. I've taken Imodium, both ends. Nothing seems to stop it. It still just pours out, boys and girls. It pours out of my mouth. Fortunately, it never happens in bed. Why is that door? Sorry about that. Well, why is that? Just a minute. The door keeps opening on its own. Is there a ghost in here, I wonder? Yes, it's pouring out and there's nothing you can do about it. Fortunately, it doesn't happen in bed. I don't think I'm someone that chats away in bed, although it's been quite a long time. So maybe I do. I, I, I just don't know, you know. I know some of you are hopping in and out of bed, left, right and centre, aren't you? Um, what's the Eurovision Song Contest uh, part one semi-final? The first half hour, I think, I've seen of it so far. Uh, really wonderful. Very, very good stage. The presentation. Oh, they had this woman on there. Now, let me see. I wrote it's on here. Petra Mead. So it's hosted this year by Mans Zell Merlov. He was one of the winners last year. I think it, I think that was him. He did that hero song. We are the heroes of the night. Whoa. Which actually not many people have asked for that. Um, uh, uh, that particular song over the year. That another one they still ask for. I can't remember what it was called now. Some girl singer. But nevertheless, he's one of the hosts. Very good looking young man. And uh, But far, far better is Petra Mead. She's this woman and she hosted it last time Sweden was there as well. And she did the um, the 60th anniversary special where they had lots of the old Eurovision winners on and artists uh, for the BBC at the end of, towards the end of last year, I think it was. She is just wonderful. She comes across as a bit mumsy, very sexy, and a bit cheeky. And she's with the crowd. She is absolutely with the crowd. And she is just wonderful. So heads up to Petra Mead, who's hosting the Eurovision Song Contest. She'll be doing the semi-final again tonight and, of course, the uh, grand final on Saturday night. Now, I haven't watched much of it, um, but I uh, San Marino... I only made a, a couple of notes here. San Marino, I quite like the San Marino song. Unfortunately, I'm not too clean on, keen on the way it's been delivered because he, he sings it all down here. He's, a, he's an older man, which is which is neither here nor there. I don't know why I mentioned that. He's an older bloke, uh, but he sings it right down here. And, it, and yet it's a disco number and it should be sung up there a bit, not down there like that. Not like a, like a you know, Engelbert Humperdinck. I, or, or, or who's that? Who's that? What's that? Um, Western. I was born under a wandering star. And he's got a voice a bit like that. Yet, it's a disco song. And to be honest, I think what they should have had there is a, a black female artist doing that, like Donna Summer. Obviously not because she's dead now. But, you know, someone like Donna Summer, a black female artist doing that would have worked so much better. It really would. They've, they've got the wrong person doing it. I think, uh, was that the Grease bloke? No, no, I don't think it was Grease. No, San Marino. Wrote it down here. San Marino. So uh, that's, I like the song, but not the way it's been delivered, unfortunately. Um, and then there is, there was the Turkish song. And there was this fit, fit boy on there. And he's got these really baggy trousers on. And then at the end, he takes his top off. Oh, God. I had to pause the video recording machine for at least five minutes gawping at that topless specimen from Turkey. Come over here. That's it. Come here. So that's that. And, and then the favourite, I believe, is Russia. Again, good looking boy. Um, I think for 
Has he got four dancers with him? But very, very clever. The, the staging of it. Forget the song. The song was very good. I can understand why it's the favourite. It's a very, very good song. He's nice. He comes across as nice. But the staging of it is, is, is something else. He, there's this white thing behind him, which is projecting pictures on it and things like that. And he goes like that and a picture comes behind him like that. And he goes like that and a picture comes behind him. And, uh, but then he starts climbing, like steps appear from to come out of the wall and he climbs on it. And let, when you look, it's completely flat. So that's very, very clever how they've done that. I must say, you, you, if you get a chance to watch it, maybe it's on YouTube. I, d I don't know how they've done that. It, ma it really is television magic. I, I wish I knew how they did. I mean, I could do it here, you know. I could start climbing up the wall behind me like Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. I could do that myself. But how they did that on the Euro, because it's all live. How how they got him to climb up this this white wall with and steps came out of it, you know. And then it, it appeared like he was just attached somehow to the wall. There weren't any wires or at least I couldn't see any wires or anything like that on there. Very, very good indeed. That door's opened again. Then how am I going to keep that closed? Closed, dear. Oh, that's it. Oh, nearly everything nearly fell off the wall then. Did you see that? Oh, don't not watch my head. Watch my head. So that's my thoughts on the Eurovision Song Contest. I've still got about an hour and a half, hour and three quarters of that one to watch. And we've got the um, the other uh, uh, semi-final tonight. And, of course, the the um, uh, the final on uh, on Saturday night on BBC One Colour at 8 o'clock, I think it is. Now, look, talking of ears, that's, remember that thing? Where is it? It's down. Actually, it's down there now. That's, see that crystal thing there? That's what fell on my head a while ago. I've been having trouble with this ear. Anyway, I went to the doctor and he said he can't see anything wrong in there caused by being smashed. However, it looks very dry and there might be a little infection. So he's given me this Optimize Ear Spray, which nurses will know what, the, Wendy will know what this is because she was a nurse looking after kind people, weren't you? Uh, sorry, kindly looking after people, not necessarily kind. And I have to spray one of these in my ear. I, I do the other one as well, because that gets itchy as well. I have to do that. What is it? One minute, one minute. Three times daily until two days after clinical recovery, as directed. So that's what I've got for my ear. And uh, hopefully that will sort that self out. <clears throat> All right. Now, we've got some birthdays today. There are one, two, three, four. I have... Six birthdays in front of me today, boys and girls. Six? I know. There are actually a lot more on Facebook than, than, than the six. But I only do the birthdays, number one, if someone's asked. Number two, if I recognise the person and I know they do do some sort of interaction. There's no point in doing these things if people don't watch them. There's no point in doing it. So if I know someone watches or they're, they're a little bit close or have been a little bit close in the past... Um, and I don't mean necessarily going out, you know, friend, friends and that sort of thing, then I pull them out. So if, if you're not one of those, if it's your birthday today, you're not one of those people I'm reading out, it means you haven't interacted. So I don't know where you are, dear. You know, we might have to send you out a search party, dear. Find out where you've gone. So remind me, if you want your birthday done, and you don't interact, you've got to tell me first. You've got to tell me, and I'll do it for you. Um... Or otherwise, if you interact, then probably you'll get it done anyway. So here we go. Uh, today's birthday is, first of all, at the top of the list, Paul Adamson, who's reached the ripe old age of 50. Happy birthday, Paul. You're still not as old as me. I've got three years on you. 53. Do you know, in seven years, I'll be 60. 60? How has that happened? And will I get there? I hope so. I'm supposed to be doing this show for another 55 years. I've been booked. By YouTube and Facebook, One Colour and everyone, dear. Everyone. Everyone. I'm still waiting for that phone call from BBC One Colour. You know. Oh, we've got a, got a little slot for you. Got a little slot for you. Could you do 1pm till 2... Uh, sorry, 1am till 2am every night for us? Yes, please. Yes, I would come and do that. Why doesn't anyone ask me? Are they really that bad, these shows? So happy birthday, Paul, who's 50 today. Happy birthday to Owen Williams. Owen, uh, I have to tell you, is responsible <clears throat> for bringing karaoke to Central Station. He was the manager there um, 
when I, uh, I I was employed to do some DJing. And I'll tell you the story. How did karaoke come about at Central Station? What happened, what happened was on a Friday, I was just about to leave home and I got a phone call and it was Owen, uh, also known as David. And he said, all right, Chris, have you left yet? I said, no. He said, do you want to bring your karaoke stuff down? And I've got a crowd in here and a drag, and it was supposed to be a drag queen, and the drag queen's cancelled. I said, yeah, it'll probably take me another 10 minutes to get there, but no, is that all right? He said, yeah, yeah, just come along when you're ready. Lovely. OK, so and that was it. Anyway, so I brought the karaoke stuff down to Central Station and it worked. It, it worked immediately, straight away. And you're very lucky when something like that happens. I've got to tell you, usually you go in somewhere and you've got to go and keep going and keep going. And eventually, hopefully, if everything works out, it starts working. But it's not always the case. So he is the one who's responsible for bringing karaoke to Central Station. And then that started working. He immediately cancelled all the acts on Friday night, which I suppose people, <laughs> you know, people weren't too happy about that. The, the, the people who got cancelled. But unfortunately, that's the way it goes. I get cancelled. I've been cancelled a few times over the years. You know, that is that is showbiz, unfortunately. You know, uh, Steve Allen on LBC often says you don't retire from doing this sort of thing. This is this is showbiz. OK, it's all showbiz. You don't retire from show business. You are retired from it. People eventually get fed up with you. They do. Even you, boys and girls. You, at some point, well, I know it's hard to believe at the moment. You're, you're sitting, oh, no, Chris. No. Believe me, one day you will get fed up with my chats. You absolutely will. You'll be fed up to the back teeth. And then that's it. I won't see you again. But if you're lucky, another lot come in. You know, so it's like a, like a bit of a turnaround sometimes, turnaround. So happy birthday to Owen, uh, who's I think it's thirty. I think you're thirty-seven today. Oh, um, so so that was the Fridays, and then the reason it went on the Mondays is because I was also um, doing karaoke at another place on Monday nights, uh, the city of Quebec. New area manager came in, decided no karaoke, so that one went, and I rung up Central, and as the Friday was going so well, I offered them the Monday as well, and they took it straight away. And um, a lot of the people from the uh, city of Quebec now come to the Monday at Central Station. So that's that's nice as well. It, that's that's nothing sort of getting back at one and doing another. Nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. I lost tonight. I gained tonight. That's how it is. It's nothing to do with getting back at anyone or anything like that. That's that's very um. Uh, very, very naive. I think if you want to do that, you know, do something else and, and hope that it affects something. That's just a load of old rubbish, that is. Uh, happy birthday to David. David Ramady. It's birthday today. He's one of our karaoke singers. Although I haven't seen you for a very while, David. Where have you been, dear? You and that lovely girl that comes along with you. Let's see you soon on a Friday or a Monday, OK? Uh, Friday, uh, karaoke at Central Station, Wharfdown Road, King's Cross, 8.30 on a Friday. And karaoke at Central Station on King's Cross on Monday at eight o'clock. And on Monday night, it's cheap drinks as well. Happy birthday tonight to Kevin. Hello, Kevin. It's been many, many years. It's got to be 10, 11, 12 years since I saw you, Kevin. Anyway, happy birthday to you today, sir. 39 years old. How did that happen? How did you get to 39, dear? How did I get to 53? <laughs> happy birthday, Kevin. Uh, happy birthday to Sinclair who's 34, Sinclair. I don't know how old you were when you were coming in the black cap. God's sake. If you're only 34 now, I dread to think how old you were when you were coming in the black cap years ago. But Sinclair, I knew him quite well. We used to go out with a, a friend of mine a long, long time ago now, who I don't think he's with us anymore. Richard, I think Sinclair told me a few years ago that he's no longer with us, unfortunately. But happy birthday, Sinclair. I do see your little photos now and again and uh, what you're up to. I do sort of take an interest in people that were uh, customers of the various places that I work, whether it's the Black Cab or Belushi's or anywhere like that. You know, I do take an interest in uh, younger people who have grown up. And you, you must have been... I mean, were you, were you actually 18 or younger than that? I do worry, Sinclair. How old were you when you first came in the black cap? Happy birthday, mate. And uh, finally, another birthday here for Jackie Can. Jackie Can is a top singer, top singer. She does cabaret. She's been on uh, Stars in Their Eyes. I think that, I'm not sure with the one with, Les, I don't think the other one with Leslie Crowther. You was with, um, uh, 
Matthew Kelly, I think it was. So happy birthday to Jackie Can as well. So that's one. And we've got six birthdays. I don't know how we're going to fit all these in, but we will try. I might have to pause the music to get them all in. Are you ready? Here we go. Paul Adamson, Owen Williams, David Ramady, Kevin Huff, Jackie Can, and Sinclair. Happy birthday to you. All right. <laughs> Happy birthday, my darlings. Hope you all have a lovely day, whatever you're doing. Cool, that's a long bit of paper. What's on the back of that paper? Mortgage illustration. Well, I had to remortgage one of my places recently. Oh, hang on a minute. There we are. Put that in the bin there. Get in the waste paper bargain. I don't know, I've get through a lot of paper, waste paper baskets, all recycled, all recycled, don't worry about that. Um, uh, I had lunch in the garden today, that was lovely, because the sun's out and it's a really nice day. And I, I never forget how lucky I am not to live in London. I, I really do feel that now. I lived in London until 1992. Uh, first of all, being brought up as a child, as a very young child in Peckham in South East 15. From there, we moved in 1969 to Roehampton, which is where I, I grew up, really, uh, in, uh, southwest, southwest 15. Uh, I stayed there till I was 83. In that time, I grew up, had a couple of girlfriends, um, got married, got divorced, and I bought my first flat in Wandsworth. And uh, that was in 1983, 4, 5, 6, 7, 89. 18, I think it was 89 I bought... 1901, no, can't remember, uh, 87, 8, 9, 10, I, I, or 80, 80, late 80s, I bought my first flat in Wandsworth, and then in 1992, I moved out here to uh, Bracknell in uh, Royal Berkshire, and uh, m moving out from London to Bracknell, it was just like live, moving to the countryside, it really is, we aren't quite countryside, I am surrounded by trees and grass, and if you come from somewhere like Wandsworth, you do think this is the country, you know, but, you know, when you when you travel around a little bit, like I've been to Norfolk recently, that's the country. That's the country, Norfolk. And I never forget when I'm sitting in that garden at, I don't know, any time sort of between 12 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's quiet and the birds are singing. I'm having my dinner. And there's no cars and no pollution and no noise and no bloody fire engines and police cars going up and down. I really feel how lucky I am. You know, even people in London, even the ones with big houses, some people have got big houses. Uh, some people who watch this show, actually. Some people who watch it, I don't know. And you know you are. You know you are. Some of you have got big houses and big gardens right in in the thick of it in London, North London. I know, it's North London. You know you are. North London. And you've got lovely big gardens and all that. But still, you are surrounded by those fumes that come over the wall. You may not be able to see them, dear. But the... <laughs> when you... <laughs> don't do any... No one coughs here. Not in Royal Berkshire. We don't have coughing, dear. We do not have coughing. Not even the birds don't cough here. They sing. They say, as I'm driving home, sometimes I'm going through London sort of early in the morning, and you tweet, <laughs> tweet. <laughs> well, it doesn't happen here. They all sing merrily. The little birds there. Uh, finally, um, today, let's have a look. I would like to say thank you to some people who have bought me in gifts recently. Gifts to the various but people are so kind. They bring me in little gifts. Nothing of you know, they're not like hugely expensive things. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. Unlike, and I did have a story to read you here about um a wedding gift. I'll save that to tomorrow. But I just want to thank some people. Um, first of all, Maureen, I don't know if she sees this show. She she noticed I had a cat and she bought me in some litter freshener for my litter tray, because I said it was smelling a bit. So thank you for that, Maureen. Uh, Mary, of course. Mary, once again, I thank you for the bars of chocolate that you keep bringing me in. Uh, Ray Reynolds brings me often in DVDs that he's recorded of old TV stuff. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Ashley, 
who gave me Maltesers, a piece of cake and ice cream last night while I was at the quiz. We recorded the quiz last night. It's on my Facebook page. Have a quick look there. The sound is a little bit iffy, I'm afraid. It's, it's been over-recorded because I wasn't sure how high the level was. But you can get the general opinion. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Chris Redden UK. And finally to Ronnie for this beautiful Irish mug. But I can't read you the prayer. I've run out of time. We're up to 20 minutes. Have a lovely Thursday and I'll see you soon. Enjoy the Eurovision tonight. Ta-da now.